Hey, what's going on guys? No guys here. Welcome back to episode 4 of the Interactive RTG. Sorry it's been a bit of a long time. Um, I've just been busy making videos, of course, for my main account. Um, but nevertheless, do not worry, I'm not neglecting this RTG by any way or any means. Now, it's late October time, so I suppose now everyone's really caught up. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you what I've done so far. Um, I'm sure many of you guys have done the icon ones. Um, uh, I'm currently in the process of doing it on my second account. Uh, I've got a token, I think, of nine tokens. So I got, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then plus the two others. Uh, so I'll get nine in total. To be honest, I don't really know which icon to choose, in all honesty. Um, to be completely honest, if you were going to choose an icon, it depends on your team. But one thing I'll say to you is uh, I would tell you the key ones I would pick. I would either go with the following um, Pep is probably the best for eight, um, but he's not the best player. Uh, I wouldn't get Nesta. I would, uh, Roberto Carlos is a good option. Nesta, what you want to look for is the agility and balance. I think agility and balance is probably the key stat you want to look for. So I would say, no matter what card you choose, always look at the agility and balance. See, there's no point using someone like Nesta. I'd rather use someone who's much cheaper. Someone like Manalas would do a better job than Nesta, if that makes sense. So I would probably go, um, I wouldn't go with Giggs. Uh, Roberto Carlos is a good option. Not to play him in left back, but to actually maybe play him maybe even in a CDM or centre mid type role. He's someone that can do everything, so I'd probably get him there. Um, her, Crespo, to be honest, in all fairness, is actually a decent card. As I said here, I think this FIFA agility balance is the most important thing. If you think about it in terms of lag, if someone has better agility and balance, um, let's say 94s, 95s, right? They're going to turn much quicker. So when there's a delayed connection or it's very laggy, they're still going to turn. The problem is when you have someone like Nesta, for example, and there's a delayed connection. Now, not only is your inputs delayed, also the turn is delayed as well. So that's why it feels even slow with delay. That's why I'll strongly suggest strong agility and balance. Crespo is still a good shout. Live I wouldn't go with. Same with Closer. Balak is decent, but I would be honest, the agility and balance does put me off. I would say if you're going to go for Balak, then I'll say push for Roy Keane. Uh, Pierlo looks like a decent one. I've used this card actually in draft and he's actually pretty good. I'll probably still probably slap a, a hunter on him. I wouldn't really play him in a CDM. I'll probably play maybe in a center mid or even a cam or maybe something like an engine or maybe even a hunter chemistry style probably make do for him. Um, Roy Keane I think is probably one of the best. Uh, medium high, very good CDM. Uh, you put a shadow on this guy, you improve his sprint and his acceleration. He's got very good stats. I know his agility and balance is not is not the best, but compared to Pep Guardiola, it's much better. And um, I think what's important here is the ball control composure, the very good passing, and then you combine that with his amazing defensive stats with a 93 stamina and aggression. I think this makes a very good CDM card. So if you are going to push towards an icon, I would gravitate towards, uh, you know, obviously when next season comes out, Roy Keane. Rivaldo, again, two-star weak foot is going to be a bit of an issue, so I wouldn't really suggest... You know, if you the more you higher you go up in divisions, it's going to be harder now. I'll be honest, Ian Wright as an Arsenal fan, I'll take him. Um, but again, it's a, I think you know what? It's unfortunately I think this year a lot of cars are dictated by the agility and balance. I think that is what's very important. Rio Ferdinand. Now I know his agility and balance is bad, but I can confirm this is one of the best centre backs to use in the game. Uh, you know, not only does he give it all the hyperlinks, I suppose you can say. Uh, or, or the main link, should I say, the green links. He's got very good stats, and I would say he's a very good player to use in the centre back. I would probably use him. Um, I know his guilty balance does let him down, but in game he does feel a bit more different. I've used him in draft. Uh, I'd highly recommend, you know, considering Rio Ferdinand. Um, Roy Costa, I wouldn't really get. Zanetti is another option. A bit like Roberto Carlos. I wouldn't really play him in right back. I'd probably play him in centre mid. But uh, I don't think jumping is that important this year. So he's actually a very good fullback. I think he's actually a very feasible option. Even a very good centre mid. Hugo Sanchez, his composure just lets him down. Unfortunately, his stats look amazing. But then when you look at, for example, the three-star weak foot, three-star skills, you can maybe get away with it. But you combine 58 composure, it's not. It's a recipe for disaster. Now, Butchogreno is the one icon I'll go for. Five-star weak foot. If you don't use three-star skills, if you don't use skills, it's not an issue. What's important here is that he has medium medium. So if you put him in striker, put him on stay forward, he'll still be very good. Deadly on each foot, but what's more important here is not only is his base stats good, very, very, very good agility and balance. I would say a hunter on this card is actually amazing. Probably even maybe even an engine, you can probably play him in cam on stay forward. A very, very good card. This is the card I'll probably suggest to you. Steven Gerald is another card. High high work rates, a very good card as well. 
Um, a very underrated card, a very good all rounder. So if you want a general centre mid in a four one two one two, I probably put Steven Gerrard. They'd probably slap a shadow on him, and he probably play that role very well. He's, he probably can even play CDM because he's high high, and he's got decent stamina. So Steven Gerrard is actually also a very good option. Actually, he has lost his five star weak foot, but um, he said I don't understand how you can lose your five star weak foot. They did the same with David Villa, they, they removed his weak foot, but uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, he's not really the best. Uh, I, I did use him in draft, I didn't find him anything special to be honest. He's still a very good player, um, but I didn't think it was anything special. Owen, I think it's going to be another blessing in disguise, uh, another secret one. Um, four star weak foot, again, a good agility and balance. Now Drogba is the final one, now, I think this is the biggest deception. Um, I think although he looks good, his agility and balance would kill his card. I genuinely think that. Don't get me wrong, he'll be very clinical, but I think the agility and balance is important. So if you dribble, I would say this is not the card for you. Combined with his low dribbling, I think they kind of didn't do him proper justice here. You know, 78 dribbling. I know he didn't really wasn't the best on the ball at dribbling, but he wasn't this bad. Those are the icons anyway. Let me just show you the team. We do need objectives, but if you're not learning these objectives, the best thing to do is to just search. So what I what I've been doing is I was going here, I'll go to the squad builder for example, and I'll choose. Let's say I, I got to do Bundesliga left, so I'll do Bundesliga, replace players, and I'll build the squad. And uh, what I would normally do is press options, and then I'll go tradable, and I'll try to look what's in my club already, untradable cards. And then what I'll do is you're allowed to have seven players uh, from that league and that league. So less than seven players. And what I'll do is maybe f push some pl push some players around. So for example, like he's a CDM, I can put him there, for example, and I can put a cam there, um, something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll fill in the gaps with some key players. So what I might do, for example, this is what I've been doing. So I'll get someone like Martinez. Don't forget, you can always sub players on as well. So what I was doing, or what I've been doing for most of the teams, is I was getting someone like Martinez on the bench, who I'd bring on as a sub. I'll get on to that card in a second. And um, I think I also, yeah, De Young. So this is the kind of the layout I went with. So what I'll do something like this. And then I'll still have the players intact. And I, a majority of the time, I'll just sub some of these players off, if that makes sense. So it's only for chemistry. I mean, it's only just to get the players in. Then maybe I'll bring on someone like Martinez or Memphis Depay. That's the way I'll be doing it. Now, you're probably wondering about my squad. So, going back to the 15k team. Uh, well, it's more of a 10k team now in terms of value. It's still a very good team. I did make some upgrades. Uh, so, this is the original team. Um, I did keep it very much intact. Um, I did explore using Shules, Hakimi um, as center backs. They are actually very good. Um, I would consider that. I'd, I kind of had an episode 3. I had to kind of uh, unlist the video though. So, you might have missed episode 3 because there was some issues with the uh, music apparently it's copyright but let me show you what I've done to my main team um, so if I go to squad selector again and I go to no oh guys YouTube yeah this one so this is the changes that I made now Martinez I did his SPC now I know by the time this video comes out he's obviously not going to be available but he's actually not a good card I know his stats make it look like he's really good but to be honest he's average he misses a lot of chances for me I, I don't know why he's very good at dribbling, but he just doesn't feel good at finishing. I don't understand why. I've experimented with Sniper. Um, I'm presuming it's the composure. That's the only thing I can imagine. But with Deadeye, he hasn't really been the best. Um, so I probably, if you do have him, you Sniper. But I'll be honest, his normal card is just as good. I'll be honest, I didn't notice that. Maybe dribbling was a bit better, but apart from that, the finishing, I didn't really notice that much. So I kind of regret doing him. We did pit, we did pack Dembele from last week with Wolves. I don't know if you saw it on my episode three. So we integrated him straight into the team, and we purchased the young for 85k. I think he goes for around 60k now. Um, there's been a market crash, so 59k he's going for. So he's actually a very cheap card that you can purchase. So a very cheap card that um, you can integrate into your team. Then I changed it around to maintain the chemistry. So um, I kept Fabra and Buffarini and Zaracho. I kept them all from the 10k team the only thing that I changed is that and also get Martinez what I did is I purchased this player now this guy is actually very good um, I don't know he's Romania I don't, I don't know is it Mitrita? Mitrita? I don't know how you say his name Me for the pronunciation but he's got a 5 star weak foot high medium now I slapped a sniper on him now obviously he's only got 6 chemistry um, but if you get a manager who's from MLS um, or Romanian manager and you get loyalty on this card and you get the correct position he gets on eight chemistry one link 
I think he's a formidable card. Legit, honestly, he's a formidable card. Um, I know his stats doesn't look like it does justice for me, but for 10k, you can buy him and basically lose no money. The reason why I use him as a as like a, a, a left mid or a right mid is mainly as like a, someone who just kind of runs with the ball. He's got very good agility and balance, so kind of keep the same thing here. Agility and balance is the key stat without within my team. If you think about it, all players are very good agility and balance. That way, in bad gameplay, they still feel good. Um, the only person that have good agility, well, he does have good agility balance, is the young. I mainly play him in CDM, um, but I did put an engine on him to fix that. Uh, medium high, a very good CDM. Now, what I've done with the back line is I've kept Bufferini and Fabro, um, but I've had it in Shaws and Hakimi. Uh, sh sh I think they're that expensive now. I think yeah, Shaws is only 3k, and so they're actually very good players. Let me show you what I play in game. Um, I play the 4 on 2 on 2. Um, this is the tactics you can copy it. Um, instructions uh, stay forward for the cam, CDM cut passing lanes, drop between defenders, cover center, left back, right back, stay back, stay back and everyone else on default. The two strikers are the one getting behind though. So get in behind for the two strikers, cam stay forward, less in the middle, right in the mid balanced. CDM cut passing lanes, drop between defenders, cover center, and two four backs on stay back. Um, I've also been you know, uh, testing the 4 4 2. I wouldn't recommend using this now, but these are tactics in case you want to copy. Um, I'm still testing it out. A video will be released on that soon. There's still a lot of testing that still needs to be done. Um, but I got, I bought all the 22 win. I was 22 and 0 on my main account. I'm using this formation or similar tactics, should I say? Um, ended up getting 26 wins, which I'm very disappointed with because I bottled it uh, towards the end. I didn't really have enough time to play my games. But 4-4-2 is a very good formation this year. Um, but on this account, the 4 one 2 one 2 I use a lot. Um, if you are struggling with defensive ability, just put this on drop back. Uh, keep the width about 6 is what I would say. And drop the depth to about 2 or 3 um, if you are struggling. And that's the kind of changes I made with this team. And uh, I finished goal 3 again this week. Uh, I didn't really have time to play. Obviously, on it's hard to play you know games on two accounts. So um, what I've done is I play Shaws and Hakimi both as centre backs just because they've got very good agility and balance well not very good it's decent agility and balance I think it's better to use this it's a bit more fun I would say honestly give it a try um, I don't know what rewards we're going to get from goal 3 but I'm looking to maybe improve potentially maybe this the centre back role but I don't know um, we're going to see how it goes we're going to see how much money we get but this team I'd recommend I also purchased Saint Maximin I bought him for 9k. He's actually a very good super sub, a very, very good super sub. I highly recommend him. Um, Bakambu is like 900 coins now. He's still decent. Um, he's good. Bamin, I would say this is a class player. If you want to get a guy as a super sub and close the game out, I think he costs like 1k now. Very good sprint speed. Use this guy. He is formidable. That is basically the team. Um, as I said, I'll probably release the rewards back on his channel. And don't worry, I'm starting back with uploads again. I just don't want to make it interactive RTG too frequently because it's not really that much that I can update you with. Um, but this is the team that I'll probably suggest and go with. To be honest, you can probably purchase, excluding Martinez, you can probably purchase this team for, I would say, maybe 170k. The only players that are very expensive, I suppose you can say, are Dembele. I don't even think Dembele is that much. Um, He's gone down, so he's about he's, he's gone down a lot. So he's about 45k. De Jong's 50k. So even then, yeah. So apart from Martinez, it's basically I wouldn't even say yeah, 130k team maybe, maybe even less. Actually, a very good choice. I'd recommend it. Um, but anyway, that's just the interactive RTG episode four. If you do have any other questions, uh, obviously feel free to let me know. That's a new team. Um, and I think what we're going to do, we're going to focus on maybe getting an icon. I don't know if we should get maybe Pep Guardiola for now. Bite the bullet or wait. Um, we'll see how that goes. But to be honest, I'm not going to do any of the squad battle objectives. I'll be honest, squad battles are just... It's not my cup of tea. I know some people, they really enjoy squad battles. But personally, for me, squad battles are just not my cup of tea, I'll be honest. Um, I find it extremely mundane, extremely boring, so I'm not going to pursue it. But uh, I've got players back. Um, I can stop online, yeah. So we've got Bundesliga left to do. Um, I'm probably not going to do these. Uh, five is a lot. I would say if you are struggling with the the icon swaps, uh, I would recommend obviously rivals. Try to. I, I know it sounds orthodox, but 
if you do lose divisions, do not worry, you're going to get easier games. It's better to kind of, in some respect, relegate yourselves and get better. Um, I've not really been playing that much rivals, but that's kind of situation on my team. Rewards will be out um, on Thursday, and I suppose we can go through the rewards on Thursday and maybe do some packs as well. Um, but that's interactive RTG so far. I just want to know what teams you guys have. Um, ain't anything in particular that you guys have. Where you go. But anyway, guys, uh, that is the video. Thank you very much for watching Interactive RTG Episode 4. Um, as I said, there's not that much changes. I would say if you're going to make a team, my best advice is co if you want to copy this team, go for it. I know you're not going to get probably put Martinez in. I would say maybe if you get some someone like an MLS player like Morales or something like that, the base of the team is still the same. We've basically kept, I suppose you can say, four out of the original 11 intact, but we just replaced it. Um, Dembele is a card in De Young is what I'll suggest if you want to get two players into your team. Um, anyway, that's episode 4 of the Interactive RG. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, boys.